If someone came up and asked you to define your exact position, you could give them your X, Y, and Z coordinates, which would tell them exactly where you are, or more accurately, your geographical position in space. Anything can be located with these usual three dimensions of space, which is the system people use around the world to describe where a particular object or person is. However, what if a fourth dimension, time, is added to the mix? This is the idea on which the concept of space-time is based. Time. How do we define it? And more abstractly, how do we perceive and experience it? In our daily lives, we perceive time as a constant entity, one that proceeds independently of everything else. Whether you're in New York City or Mumbai, time proceeds at the same pace and in the same direction, namely, forward. Indeed, this is how time is characterized in classical physics. What you might not know is that this definition has some limitations, and as such, there are many phenomena that the principles of classical physics cannot explain. This is where quantum mechanics comes in. Famous physicists Albert Einstein and Max Planck are considered the pioneers of this branch of physics. As early as 1905, Einstein proposed a now widely popular theory that the speed of light is independent of the motion of all observers, and that space and time are interconnected in a single continuum. This theory, which is now a cornerstone of modern and quantum physics, is known as Einstein's special theory of relativity. Einstein's proposed idea of a single continuum, where space and time are interwoven, is what people call space-time. According to this theory, time, which has traditionally been considered an independent entity according to the principles of classical physics, is affected when a body moves through space. This happens because, according to the theory, time and space are connected and part of a single continuum, called space-time. One of the very popular examples of this is that if you, hypothetically, were to move incredibly fast and approach the speed of light, time would slow down for you. Einstein also hypothesized that observers in relative motion with each other will disagree on the timing of simultaneous events. Put simply, if one observer says that they observed two given events occur at the same time, another observer, who is in relative motion with the first one, will disagree, saying that those events happened at different times. After bringing to the world his idea about space-time, and how both space and time were inextricably connected, he continued to work on his theory to study how massive objects impact the fabric of space-time, and subsequently introduced gravity to the mix. As a result, the General Theory of Relativity was published in 1915, a decade after the Special Theory of Relativity. Classically, gravity has been defined in alignment with Sir Isaac Newton's Three Laws of Motion, a force of attraction that exists between two bodies, regardless of how small or massive they are. You, watching this video, are currently being pulled by the center of the Earth towards it. This is what keeps you from floating off into the air. According to the General Theory of Relativity, however, all objects exist in the continuum of space-time and distort the space-time around them. It is this distortion that pulls in other bodies, giving rise to the force of gravitation. Think of it this way. Imagine space-time to be a tightly stretched trampoline. If you put a large object in the center, it will press down on the trampoline and create a dimple on the surface. Now, if you roll a marble on the trampoline, it will spiral inwards towards the dimple as if it were being pulled in by the dimple of the trampoline. Although this is a very famous method to visualize the concept of space-time, remember that it's a very oversimplified analogy and doesn't provide the complete picture of gravity or the general theory of relativity. Distortions in space-time give rise to some really fascinating phenomena. When light in space bends around an enormous object, say, a black hole, the object acts as a lens. This is called gravitational lensing and it helps us see objects that lie millions of miles behind the object operating as a lens. We have a separate video on gravitational lensing and how it works. You can find a link to that video in the description. Even Earth, through its rotational motion on its axes, causes a distortion in space-time that affects space objects, natural or man-made, in its vicinity. Everything causes distortions in space-time, and these distortions help us a lot to enhance our understanding of the incredible universe in which we live.